Sixth grade, module two, lesson 11, classwork, exploratory challenge. You not only need to solve each problem, but your group also needs to, pr to prove to the class that the decimal in the product is located in the correct place. As a group, you are expected to present your informal proof to the class. Okay, so obviously we're not doing it in class, but we'll still follow the directions. So calculate the product and we need to s prove why the decimal point is in the correct place in our problem. So I'm going to solve it how we learned how to solve it how to solve it in 5th grade by just using the standard algorithm. 34 and 62 hundredths times 12 and 8 tenths. I don't need to line up the decimal points when I'm multiplying decimals, but I do need to remember that they're there. I'll worry about them at the very end. So I'm going to start with 8. 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. 8 times 6 is 48, plus 1 is 49, carry the 4. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 4 is 36, carry the 3. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Okay, I'm going to erase what I carried so that I don't get confused next time and think that I haven't used them yet. Cross out the 8 onto the 2. Put my placeholder down. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. I'll erase that 1. Done with the 2. On to the 1. This time I have two zeros. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 3 is 3. Add it together. 9 plus 4 is 13, carry the 1. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 2 is 11, carry the 1. 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 9 is 17, 17 plus 6 would be 23, carry the 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 4 is 14, carry the 1, and 1 plus 3 is 4. So now we need to figure out where the decimal point goes. Well, in the problem, there was one, two, three digits behind the decimal point. So my answer, I need to move it one, two, three places to the left. So I get 443 and 136 thousandths. Now I need to prove that the decimal point's in the right spot. And I'm gonna do that by estimating. So my estimate, I'm going to round 34 and 62 hundredths to 35, and I'm going to round 12 and 8 tenths to 13. So let's do 35 times 13. So 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. Put our 0 down, get rid of that 1. 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 3 is 3. Add together we get 455, which is pretty close to 443. So, but we're trying to prove that the decimal is in the correct spot. So if I get 455 as my estimate, and my actual answer is 443 and 136 tenths, if my decimal point was anywhere else, so say my decimal point was here, then 44 is very far off from 455. If my decimal point had been here, 4,431 is also very far away from 455. So if the decimal was in a different place, then the product wouldn't be close to 455. So that would be your proof and a good explanation to write down. B, Xavier earns $11.50 per hour working at the nearby grocery store. Last week, Xavier worked for 13 and 5 tenths hours. How much money did Xavier earn last week? Remember to round to the nearest penny. So he earned eleven fifty per hour and he worked 13 and, five ten, 13 and a half hours, basically. So let's go ahead and multiply those and then we'll estimate to make sure our decimal point's in the right spot. So 1150, I'm gonna leave off the zero because that's just extra to multiply, times 13 and five tenths. Five times five is 25, carry the two. Five times one is five plus two is seven, five times one is five.
put my zero down. Get rid of this two. Done with the five, on to the three. Three times five is 15. Carry the one, three times one is three, plus one is four, and three times one is three. Get rid of this one again. Two zeros, one times five is five, one times one is one, and one times one is one. Add them together. Five plus zero plus zero is five, seven plus five is 12 plus zero. Carry the one. One plus five is six, plus four is four, is 10 plus 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 1 is 5. 1 plus nothing is 1. All right, so there are one, two numbers, digits behind a decimal point. So I'm going to move this over one, two places, and I get $155.25. So it's already rounded to the nearest penny for us, which is great. So let's estimate to make sure that's an accurate um, amount of money or we put the decimal point in the right spot. So I'm going to round $11.50 to $12 times 13 and a half hours. I'll round to 14, 14 hours. So 12 times 14. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1. So we get about $168. So we can again prove that if the decimal point was in a different place, so say it was right here, $15, $15 is not close to $168. If we had it right there, $1,552 also not close to $168. So there is our proof. Exercises. Number one, calculate the product. Three hundred twenty-four and fifty-six hundredths times fifty-four and eighty-two hundredths. Okay, it's going to be really important, since this is, these are numbers with a lot of digits, that you keep all of the numbers lined up. Because if we don't have all of our numbers lined up in the correct place values, then when we go to add, we might be adding the wrong number. So be really careful and make sure that you keep your, di your digits lined up in the correct place value. Okay. If you need to use grid paper, use grid paper. All right start with the 2. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry the 1. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. Carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, Get rid of what we carried. Done with 2. On to 8. Put down my 0. 8 times 6 is 48. Carry the 4. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 4 is 44. Carry the 4. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 4 is 36. Carry the 3. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 3 is 19. Carry the 1. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 25. Erase what we carried. Put down two zeros. Again, make sure everything's lining up. Done with the eight, on to the four. Four times six is 24. Carry the two. Four times five is 20, plus two is 22. Carry the two. Four times four is 16, plus two is 18. Carry the one. Four times two is eight, plus one is nine, and four times three is 12. Okay, we're almost there. Grace. This time we have three zeros. Five times six is 30, carry the three. Five times five is 25, plus three is 28. 
carry the 2. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22. Carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Carry the 1, and 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and add. This would be 2. 1 plus 8 is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13, plus 4 is 17. Carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 6 is 11, plus 2 is 13. Carry the 1. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 9 is 16, plus 8 is 24, plus 8 is 32. Carry the 3. 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 9 is 17, plus 2 is 19. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7. 1 plus 6 is 7, and 1. Alright, so now we have 1, 2, 3, 4 digits behind these decimal points, which means I need to move my decimal point over. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I end up with 17,792 and 3792, that would be 3,792 ten thousandths. Big number. Lots of digits. That is a hard problem because it's a lot of tiny little steps and just one little mistake. So if you'd said four times two is nine, which tr I've done many times before on accident, when you're doing that many small problems, it's so important that you make sure you go slowly, you keep everything lined up, and you're getting all the multiplication problems correct. So just go slow. Number two. Kevin spends $11.25 on lunch every week during the school year. If there are 35 and 5 tenths weeks during the school year, how much does Kevin spend on lunch over the school year? Remember to round to the nearest penny. So $11.25 every week for 35 and a half weeks. So let's do $11.25 times 35 and 5 tenths. Okay, 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, carry the 1, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, 5 times 1 is 5. Erase what we've carried, put my 0 down, on to the next 5. 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, and 5 times 1 is 5. On to the 3. This time 2 placeholders. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 1 is 3. Add it together. 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 5 is 13. Carry the 1, 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 6 is 12, plus 7 is 19, 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 3 is 9, and 3. So there are, were, 1, 2, 3 problems behind the decimal point, 3 digits, so I'm going to move it over 3 places, 1, 2, 3, so we get 399 and 375 thousandths, but we need to round to the nearest penny. So this is the penny, the hundredths place. So since there's a 5 next to it, the 5 is going to round the 7 up to an 8. So we actually get $399.38 is how much he spent the whole school year for lunch. Number three, Gunner's car gets 22 and 4 tenths miles per gallon. And his gas tank can hold 17 and 82 hundredths gallons of gas. How many miles can Gunner travel if he uses all the gas in, a gas, in the gas tank? So 17 and 82 hundredths gallons of gas it can hold, and it goes 22 and 4 tenths miles per gallon. 17 and 82 hundredths times 22 and 4 tenths start with 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 8 is 32. Carry the 3. 
4 times 7 is 28, plus 3 is 31. Carry the 3, and 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Put our 0 down, done with the 4. Erase what we've carried. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 8 is 16. Carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. Carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Erase. Two zeros on to the next two. Two times two is four. Two times eight, 16. Carry the one. Two times seven is 14, plus one is 15. Carry the one. Two times one is two, plus one is three. Now we can add. We have eight. Two plus four is six. One plus six is seven. Plus four is 11. 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 5 is 13, plus 6 is 19, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9, and 3. Now, last step, there were 1, 2, 3 digits behind the decimal point, so 1, 2, 3 digits would give us 399 and 168 thousandths, and that was how many miles he can travel. So miles on an entire tank of gas. And number four, the principal of East High School wants to buy a new cover for the sand pit used in the long pit, long jump competition. He measured the sand pit and found that the length is 29 and 2 tenths feet and the width is 9 and 8 tenths feet. What will the area of the new cover be? So area is length, times width. So we're going to do 29 and 2 tenths times 9 and 8 tenths. 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. 8 times 9 is 72, plus 1 is 73. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 7 would be 23. Put our 0 down, done with the 8. Race onto the 9. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 8 is 26. Add those together. 3 plus 8 is 11, carry the 1. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. 2 plus 6 is 8, and 2. We had one, two digits behind the decimal point, so let's move it over one, two places. We have 286 and 16 hundredths is the new area, so that would be feet squared, or you could write square feet.